This is the Taiwan blue magpie, commonly known as the long-tailed mountain girl. Walking through a forest in the mountains, you may suddenly see a blue magpie flying past, a gorgeous sight which rarely fails to thrill. This beautiful magpie is a species unique to Taiwan, for it exists nowhere else in the world. If the very last Taiwan blue magpie should disappear, this bird would vanish forever from the face of our planet. Photographer Liu Yenming, known as Beard, was a key figure in the making of this film. His patience and courage saw us through many difficulties in the filming process. Some time ago, Beard was one of the very few freelance photographers in Taiwan to begin recording wildlife in nature using 16 millimeter film. He covered Taiwan independently from north to south, from coastal areas to the mountains, recording the habits of many living species in conservation areas. In 1987, Beard arrived at the Shanping workstation, part of the Taiwan Forestry Research Institute's facilities at Liugui. His initial purpose in going to Shanping was not to watch the blue magpie, but because this is southern Taiwan's largest experimental forest and still has a rich fauna. On his first trip to Shanping, Beard was lucky enough to get some shots of the blue magpie in the wild. Over the next three years, he returned here frequently to capture more segments of the blue magpie's life on film. At one time, Shanping Forest was little different from the surrounding area. But in recent decades, the rapid development of Taiwan's lowland areas has turned Shanping into one of the island's very few remaining large-scale natural forests at low elevation. While wildlife is steadily disappearing from the neighboring areas, Shanping still shelters a great diversity of animals. But wily bird catchers have even penetrated this forest. Serious bird trapping in the past once caused the blue magpie to disappear from here. For about five years, Shanping's research scientists saw no sign of the blue magpie. Thanks to dedicated conservation efforts led by Hung Biaojin, chief of the Taiwan Forestry Research Institute's facilities at Liugui, Shanping once more became a lively center of wildlife studies after years of decline due to excessive disturbance. Dr. Jin strongly advocated making films of mountain wildlife as a way of giving busy city dwellers the chance to experience the beauties of nature. He gave Beard all possible assistance and encouragement. Photographing the beautiful Taiwan blue magpies is not the only work needs to be done. At the Samping area, there are 116 species of birds. This nest full of blue magpies 
are merely one of many such families. Most importantly, we need to know how to protect this piece of beautiful hardwood ecosystem. How to protect it more? That's the most important. Although it is extremely difficult to photograph the blue magpie, Dr. Lucia Liu Severinghaus of Academica Sinica's Institute of Zoology, the only ornithologist in the world who has studied the Taiwan blue magpie, was very excited as soon as she saw the rough, uncut footage. Many of us get great pressure from watching the nature series filmed abroad. For many years, I myself have worked on research of nature, and I get tremendous enjoyment out of my work. I always wish to share my enjoyment with others, but words have their limitations in describing the richness of nature. After seeing the film made by Mr. Yeming Liu, I felt very excited, as what he filmed is the Formosa blue magpies which happen to be a bird I'm researching. This is a large showy bird with a smart disposition. The bird is an unique species native to Taiwan and Taiwan only. Some people like to catch the birds and keep them in cages. But what we see in caged bird is akin to watching convicts in prison. The bird cannot move freely. In this film, we see the blue magpies are very natural, very much at ease, bird chirping. The Taiwan blue magpie is a member of the crow family. It is quite a large bird, and without a doubt, the most strikingly beautiful blue magpie in the world. They can be found from low to medium elevation in Taiwan, usually in fairly open, broad-leaved forests. They occasionally appear in open areas with shrubs and grasses. The Taiwan blue magpie is highly intelligent and wary. Perhaps this is why they have been able to survive, living in the disturbed forest, somewhat close to human habitation. An omnivorous bird, their diet ranges from fruit, insects, reptiles and small birds, to leftover scraps of cooked food. When they catch a hairy caterpillar, they even know how to rub it on a tree trunk so as to remove the inedible prickly hairs. The Taiwan blue magpie is strongly social and seldom appears alone. These birds are usually active in small flocks in the middle and upper parts of the trees. To make short flights, they often glide downwards, one after another in sequence. There seems to be a clear linear dominance hierarchy in a flock. They are very aggressive by nature, with a strong sense of territory. At breeding time, the Taiwan blue magpie often builds its nest in the same spot for years, provided there is no human disturbance. At Shanping, their nests are built on the branches of very tall trees. In Beard's first year, the camera was placed too far away. The next year, the photos were all dark shadows against a pale sky because the photographer was on the ground.
In the summer of 1989, a full-scale search for nests was launched by the staff at Shanping, and Beard was full of confidence. Thanks to careful protection and minimal disturbance, this flock of blue magpies was observed from twig carrying and nest building to taking on the role of busy parents. Soon a clutch of eggs is laid. The female bird commences her long and lonely task of incubating the eggs. During the incubation period, the male bird and other birds in the group frequently bring food to keep up the female's strength. If the other birds are a long time returning, she will call loudly from beside the nest, waiting for their distant responses. Once another blue magpie draws near, the female will flutter her wings and open her beak for food. A blue magpie nest normally contains four to six eggs. The nest we filmed here has five. During the incubation period, the female bird often shifts the eggs around to permit the eggs to warm more evenly, and thus ensure that the embryo develops normally inside the shell. Out he comes, all five eggs successfully hatched out as baby birds. Once the baby birds are hatched out, the adults become very busy. It seems the nestlings are never satisfied. After eating, they defecate. Like human babies, they need constant attention from the adult birds. For the first few days after the baby birds hatch out, the female bird remains at the nest to look after them, relying on other birds to keep up a constant supply of food. After a few days, the mother also joins in the task of finding food and flying back with it. This flock of blue magpies has four adult birds. Now of the three birds on by the nest, Two of them may be parents of the fledglings. The third one and the missing adult bird are helpers assisting the parents in raising the fledglings. The helpers are probably siblings from previous blues of the parents. This helper phenomenon is quite unique among the living beings. The blue magpie has a strong sense of cooperation. When a pair of birds are nesting, the other adult birds in the group will share in protecting the nest and looking after the mother bird and the nestlings. This is because Taiwan blue magpie has identical features for both male and female bird. Unless you see them mating, dissect the bird or put markers on them, otherwise there is no way to tell them apart. In order to understand the interrelationship between individual birds, 
you need to spend long period of time shaking and investigating the bird. The young nestling's bowels are stimulated by food, causing it to defecate as soon as it eats. The adult bird doing the feeding will wait at one side, and as soon as it sees the nestling raise its behind to defecate, it pulls its beak down to catch the dropping with unfailing accuracy. The fledgling's dropping is enclosed in a membrane called the fecal sac and looks like a small marshmallow. Once a young bird is able to fly, it doesn't produce fecal sacs anymore. During nesting time, the mother bird is the only adult bird that spends the night on the nest. The others sleep nearby in large trees with dense foliage. Their work starts at first light, feeding themselves and also having to feed those ever hungry young. Searching for food with all their might, even several adults still cannot satisfy the needs of the five young, unfortunately. The nestling which has failed to snatch food a few times displays marked physical weakness in a few days. nestling number five grows thinner and weaker. No matter how eagerly he stretches his little neck, he cannot reach any food. From the second week, only four baby birds remain in the nest. The three adult birds continue to go out diligently every day in search of food to feed the four young. Each time, they can feed only one young, and usually, whichever opens its beak the widest and stretches its neck the furthest gets fed first. The young birds grow up fast. They are normally covered in feathers in about three weeks. By the fifth week, they are big enough to leave the nest. Their wing fluttering behavior may indicate friendliness, but it more often serves as a way of begging for food. After one bird has fluttered its wings, another blue magpie often arrives to give it some food. Sometimes it swallows the food. Sometimes it gives it to the young. Even the nestlings will make fluttering motions when they see an adult approach the nest, although their wings don't even have any feathers. The four fledglings grow bigger every day, and soon the little nest is not large enough to hold them.
Young birds, which have just fledged, will stay on nearby branches, occasionally flying from one branch to another to test the strength of their wings. Although capable of flying short distances, they still cannot find food, and the adult birds must continue to feed them. Sometimes the adults will perch beside them to rest or to look after them. Once the young birds leave the nest, they may fly wherever they please. Their childhood comes to an end the moment they step out of the nest. It's a long, arduous process for a blue magpie to rear its young until they are independent and mature enough to propagate themselves. Not a single step can be neglected along the way. Through their efforts, we can see that despite differences in needs, approaches, and skills, the process and meaning of life are the same for all species. Thus, all lives deserve equal respect. The beautiful blue magpie really ought not to be seen only among sheltered forests deep in the mountains. It should not be as uncommon a bird as it is today. Just imagine a hundred years ago when broad-leaved forests like this were widespread in Taiwan. The Taiwan blue magpie was a common species of bird. Today there may be many other types of woodland birds apart from the Taiwan blue magpie whose habitats are gradually being encroached upon by us. Strictly prohibiting bird catching and conserving our forests are the only way to protect the stock of Taiwan blue magpies as well as to provide sufficient living space for many other species of woodland birds. Only in this way can our beautiful natural environment be preserved. Oh, I'm